In this lesson, we will be looking at functions and kind of what that means. So a function is a relation in which each element or each item in the domain, this is probably where we're at right now, is paired with exactly one element in the range. In other words, every different x has a different y. That's probably still over your head. It'll make much more sense, I think, when we put it into context for you. So, first of all, I'm going to give you a relation. In this case, is a re a re the relation is a set of ordered pairs. Negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, etc., etc., etc. We are, first of all, going to um, express that relation in table format, okay? So, in table format means we're just going to take each coordinate, negative 4, 0. Um, obviously, this is your x and this is your y when we're dealing with coordinates, so I'm going to put it in an xy table. So, I just have the coordinate negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, negative 2, 1, 2, and 3, 3. Okay? Then when I do it as a mapping, what I want to do is I want to first of all list all the different x's that you see. In this particular table, if I look in the x column, every single x is different. I have negative 4, negative 3, 0, 1, and 3. Those are all, f all, all five different numbers. So I'm just going to list all of them. Okay, then if you look in your y column, you're going to list all of the different y's, and again, they're all five different numbers. So I have 0, 1, negative 2, 2, and 3. Okay, then to do your mapping, what you're going to do is you're going to pair the ones that go together. So negative 4 goes with 0, 3 goes with 1, 0 goes with negative 2, so I'm just going to draw a line um, from the, the x to the y that goes along with it. And in this case, it's real easy. It's just like that. Okay? Then we are going to graph those ordered pairs. So I am going to graph the point negative 4, 0, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, so 3 to the left and 1 up, 0, negative 2, 0 left or right, not left or right at all, 2 down, 1, 2 would be 1 to the right, 2 up. 3, 3 would be 3 to the right, 3 up. Okay, so there's what it looks like there. So I took this relation now, and I made a table of it, I made a mapping of it, and I made a graph of it. We are going to determine if this relation is a function looking at all three ways. Okay? So, here's what you want to look at. Um, first of all, looking at it from the perspective of a table. Okay? As long as you have all different x's, okay, again, as long as you have all different x's, it is automatically going to be a function, and mine are all different, so they're automatically going to be a function. From the mapping standpoint, what you want to look at is you want to make sure that none of these arrows, like I can't have two arrows leading from one x to two different y's. So if I had an arrow going like that as well, and I don't in this case, but if I did, it would not be a function. But because I don't have that line in there, each um, arrow leads out of one x and goes to exactly one y, then um, it is a function. And then, if you can tell by looking at the graph, um, there's this thing that we'll define here in a minute called the vertical line test. And a vertical line test is a, a test where you need to be able to draw a vertical line through any single p spot on the graph and only cross one coordinate at a time. Okay? So if I were to move this vertical line anywhere throughout this graph, if I stop right here, I only hit one point. If I stop right here, I only hit one point. If I stop right here, I only hit... There is no spot where I will... Um, hit more than one point at a time. And so I can tell by the graph that this is also a function. So is this a function? Yes. Every different x has a different y. do a couple more of these. Um, here I'm asking you about what the vertical line test is. And the vertical line test is what we talked about before. Um, and I will just sort of have you write this out. A vertical line drawn anywhere K 
can only cross the graph. in one spot to be a function. Oops. Okay. So a vertical line drawn anywhere can only cross the graph in one spot to be a function. So if I look at this very first graph over here, and I move this vertical line anywhere along the graph, you can see that it's only crossing the red line in one spot ever. So this one would be a function. Okay, if I move over here, um, if I draw the vertical line right there, you can see that it crosses in two spots, there and there, not a function. Okay, if I move over to the next graph, this one is not a function either because if I were to draw that vertical line right here, it actually crosses in infinitely many spots. It is not a function. Okay, and then over here, if I draw the vertical line, some people think right here that it is not a function because it crosses in two spots. And I don't know how well you can see this, but this is actually an open circle right here, meaning there's actually not a point on this line. So that line goes right up to that point, but it doesn't include that point. So if I were to draw the vertical line right here, it would cross the graph at this spot because this is a closed circle, but it would not cross the graph at that spot because it's an open, open circle. So this actually is a function. Okay. All right, so here we go. Another one. Express the following relation in the table as a mapping and as a graph, and then look and see whether it's a function. So first of all, I want to look at the um, table, okay? And I've got a little red flag here because I'm seeing um, the same x both times, okay? And when I look at that x, I'm also seeing different y's that go along with it, okay? So I have a 2, 5, and a 2, 4. If I have, again, all the same x's, it's, or I'm sorry, all different x's, it's automatically a function. If I have the same x's or duplicate x's here, like I do with the 2's, then you have to pay attention to what's happening. Here, um, I have different y's that go along with it. And you can see that that is not going to make a function, okay? If we do this as a mapping, I'm going to list all my different x's. So I have a negative 3, I have a 2, and I have a 3. And with my y's, I'm going to list my different y's. I have a 6, a 5, a 1, and a 4. Okay, then I'm going to draw a line from three, negative 3 to 6, from 2 to 5, because these are the coordinates in my table, from 3 to 1, and then again from 2 to 4. So, because you have more than one line coming out of this 2, going to different y's, it is also not a function, okay? If we go ahead and plot these points, um, if I plot the point negative 3, 6, 2, 5, oops, sorry, 2, 5, 3, 1, and 2, 4, okay? And now I do the vertical line test. So if I draw my vertical line right here, I'm going to cross that graph in more than one spot. And so it is not a function for that reason as well. So this is not a function um, because the same x's have different y's. Okay, now, if I went back to the table or the mapping or whatever, and I made this a 5, let's say, then I would have 2, 5, and 2, 5. As then I would not have this line here anymore, okay? Nor would I have the 4. Um, but 2 only would get mapped to 5, so it would be like that. And if I did not have the point 2, 4, and that were gone, that's what it would look like. And then it would become a function. So it's okay if you have duplicate x's 
as long as they have the same y's that go with them. But the problem becomes when you have the same x's, like I do right here, they're both 2's, with different y's, in this case one was a 5 and one was a 4, then that is not a function. Alright, then I'm going to have you determine whether this is a function or not. And you're going to have to kind of make your own table, but I want you to think about this. We have talked a lot about linear equations. And linear equations, remember, cannot have any more than two variables. You can't have exponents in the, um, with the variables at all. Your variables can't be multiplied together, and you can't have um, uh, variables in the denominator. Okay, so this sure looks like a linear equation to me. It also happens to be in standard form, ax plus by equals c. No fractions or decimals. Your leading coefficient is 1, and your GCF is 1. So, I'm sorry, your leading coefficient is positive, and your GCF is 1. All right, so I am actually going to take this equation, and I'm going to solve it for y. So I will subtract 2x over, okay, and I'll have negative y equals negative 2x plus 6. I'm going to divide by negative 1, because I don't want it to be a negative y, I want it to be positive y, and then I'll have 2x minus 6. And I am just going to pick it up a few different numbers for x. I don't need very many. I'm going to pick probably 3. So I'm going to pick 0, I'm going to pick negative 2, and I am going to pick 1. Okay? When I plug in 0, I have y equals 2 times 0 minus 6, or 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. When I plug in negative 2, I have y equals 2 times negative 2 minus 6, which is negative 4 minus 6, which is negative 10. When I plug in 1, I have y equals 2 times 1 minus 6, which is negative 4. Okay, notice every different x I pick is coming out with a different y. And so yes, it is going to be a function. If we were to graph this, 0, negative 6, negative 2, negative 10, and 1, negative 4. That's what it would look like. This is a line, okay, it would go like this. And all lines except for vertical lines are functions. Vertical lines are not functions, but every other line will be, okay? So is this a function? Yes. Again, every different x has a different y. Okay.